So we're ready to build our capture class out and actually render a view and then respond, allow the user to download the PDF. Let's first of all have a look at how we may want to use this. So I would like to say capture load and then I'd like to pass in a view. So invoice.php for example. And then into this, I'd like to be able to pass the data I want to see in that PDF. So for example, order one, two, three, four, five, six. And I might have a name in here. So Dale Garrett. And then I might have an amount in here as well. So all of this data is going to be passed to our view then. So let's focus on this load method first of all. So under capture, let's go ahead and build this method. So remember into this, we pass in the view and then the data. So we're going to say file name and then data. That's going to be default to an empty array. And now we need to use that view class that we built earlier. So what I'm going to do is when this class is instantiated, I'm going to say this view equals new view. We need to import this. So use code course views view and up here we can just have a protected view. Now you wouldn't ordinarily do this if you're working within a framework this would be within some kind of container or it might you might already have some kind of uh, method of rendering views this isn't strictly great but like I said you can swap it out for any other rendering method you want this is just so we can really get this going so within this load method then what we want to do is we want to store this view so we want to say this view and then we have that load method remember on our view class just here. In fact, I think we might change this to render. So if you go ahead and change this to render and we go over to here, and use render instead. We pass in that file name and that data. And now we have our view that we can do something on. Now what we want to do now is capture the image. So I'm going to up here say protected PDF. So we have another property just up here. And I'm going to say this PDF equals this. I'm going to implement a capture image method and that's going to pass in that view. So just to recap, what we're doing is we're loading in this view. We already saw an example of this in the last video. And then we are actually capturing an image of that view. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to store that image and then what we have then is a reference to that under this PDF. So let's implement this capture image method. And into this, we pass a view. This is just going to be HTML, CSS, whatever else at this point. And now we want to write this content to a file so we can then pick it up with phantom.js. So we're going to say path equals this write file we pass in our view and all of write file is going to do so we can implement this now is taking that view and we're going to write using file put contents so all that's going to do then is place within storage a file with all of our data in that's essentially all we're doing at the moment so the path then is going to be storage slash and then what we're going to do is generate a unique value here and all I'm doing is I'm MD5 hashing a unique ID but of course you can choose any other method because we're immediately deleting this file after we've done with it it doesn't really matter too much but again choose whatever you want to do and then we're going to add a PDF extension and the data that we want to write to this file is the view we pass in like that. Now we need to return the path of this file that has been generated. So to do this really easily, we can just say path equals there that will write that content to a file and then we'll end up with this path variable. So let's just uh, kill the page here and output path and just see where we're at at the moment. 
So remember, we pass in the file name of the view and any data. We render that using Twig. Then we capture our image. And to, by capturing the image, all we're doing is writing this to a file. And writing it to a file involves just file put contents and popping that in a file. So when we run this now, we should see a temporary file within the storage folder. So I'm going to hit enter. We can see that's been output now. So we've got 22 at the start, 54 at the end. And you can see in here within our storage directory, we have this file in here. Now it's got a PDF extension and it's just HTML at the moment. We're going to let Phantom actually render an image of this. So let's delete this for now. We don't really need that hanging around in there. And of course, what we're going to do is in capture, get rid of die path, but we are going to return path. So path equals this right file. We now have the path within this capture image method. So what we're now ready to do is actually capture this image using Phantom JS and then go ahead and serve it to the user. So let's jump onto the next video where we're going to be installing any other dependencies that we need. We have Phantom JS so we can actually try and wrap this up.